In this video, I am going to go over solutions in Power Platforms. We're going to talk about what it is, when to use it, environment variables, connection references, managed solutions, along with application lifecycle management. Let's get started. A solution is a container for your Power Platform asset. Think about how they give baskets with chocolates, crackers, candies, and all the other stuff that comes along with it. In Power Platform, the assets are the Power Automate flows, Power Amps, environment variables, connection references, and many more. Let's talk about when should we use it. Either one, you have more than two Power Platform assets, or B, what you have built has a critical business impact. Just for example, when you're gifting something to someone and it is bought into items, what do you usually do? You usually put it in a gift bag or something to wrap it up together before gifting it to them. When I say critical business impact, I mean it will impact more than one person and if something goes wrong, it will affect your business process. And if it has an impact to your business process, I would hope that you have implemented or thinking about implementing application lifecycle management, AKA ALM. You may have heard of dev test prod before. ALM is kind of like baking a pie. The goods are being cooked in the oven, taste tested in the kitchen. If the pie is good, it would be served on a plate to your house guests. If the pie is not good, you wouldn't want to serve it on a plate and have them try, right? The development environment is where the developers gathers and mixes the ingredients and then bake it in the oven. The test environment is where others would try the pie and give feedback. If the majority agree that it is good enough to be presented to the house guests, it is ready to be pushed to the production environment. The production environment is where the house guests will eat the pie and hopefully give you compliments about it. Now you know what it is and when to use it. Let's go to the solutions page. To get to solutions, you can go to make.powerautomate.com or make.powerapps.com. And then on the left navigation, there should be something called solutions. If it is not already there, you may have to go to more and then click on solutions. This is where all the solutions live in this environment. But if you look closely, every environment has a default solution. The default solution is a container of all of the Dataverse objects. Don't be surprised that there are a lot of objects already there. Let's go back to the solutions page and create a new solution. It will ask for a display name of the solution, the name, when they say name is the internal name of the solution, and publisher. So you can either create a new publisher, let's do that, and you can create a display name and then the internal name and then the prefix. So the prefix is pretty important to me. The prefix will be the prefix of all your objects that is created in the solution. When I'm working on a solution for a client, I usually create a publisher for myself or for the company that I work for. So we can tell who created the solution immediately. If you know you are going to be using a data connector, I would highly recommend creating connection references before adding actions that require a connection in a flow because it will honor your publisher's prefix for the internal name. Whereas if you do afterwards, the prefix of the internal name will start with share. There's just something satisfying about all the prefix being the same to me. For the naming conventions, I usually like to put solution name dash whatever the name of the flow I want to call it, app, environment variable, or connector. I know the internal name will be longer than expected, but trust me, when you are selecting which connection reference to use for a connector or which environment variable to pick from from your dynamic content in a workflow, you will thank me for that. Okay, one of the most common questions is, what if I want to use the same connection reference for another solution? Should I do that or should I create a new connection reference for this specific solution? I would say, yes, you should 100% create a new connection reference for this specific solution. My colleague does not agree with that, but let me tell you why I like to do things like this. If the developers endorse sharing connection references, I'm sure somebody has already changed the connection reference to be authenticated with their account. Now all the flows with that connection reference are pointing to the newly authenticated account causing issues where we could have just avoided by creating connection references per solution. Secondly, it messes up the naming convention that we have come up with. Third, when you're giving someone a gift basket, are you gonna say, please share the napkins? 
If you're interested in getting the use data connectors for all of your environments, please check out my other video that I have created. If your solution has an Outlook reference, which every solution should, because how are you or anybody gonna know if a flow has failed? If you think it will never go wrong, why does every building have a fire alarm system? To check if your flow is using the correct connector references, you can do so by clicking the Eclipse, Advanced, and the Show Dependencies. Anyways, let's move on to environment variables. Environment variables are a great place to store variables that are going to change depending on which environment the solution is located at, such as SharePoint sites, document libraries, lists, and etc. In every solution, I would suggest having these three environment variables. The first one is send error email to. If an app or a flow has failed, it will send an email to these email addresses. Second, if the business process is required to send an email notification, such as sending to a distribution list or somebody important, but during the development process or testing process, you don't actually want to send it to them because you're not ready yet. It's not in production. I would highly recommend creating something called test mode on. Environment variable is going to be a Boolean variable where most of my flows would be if test mode is true, then sent it to the test mode on email. So the test mode on email environment variable is going to be a string of email addresses or that would get replaced to the actual users you want to send it to. In the solution, you can either create new flows or power apps or add existing ones. To add existing Power Automate flows, go ahead and go to add existing automation and cloud flows. You will see that there is two tabs from Dataverse and outside of Dataverse. When you create a new Power Automate flow or Power Apps outside the solution, it doesn't get automatically get stored in Dataverse until you have manually added to a solution. Unless the create new Canvas app and cloud flows in Dataverse solutions feature is turned on for that environment, which would default all Canvas apps and cloud flows in a solution. When the solution is ready to be tested in the test environment, I will usually check every flow or app to ensure all of the dependencies are added to the solution. Run the solution checker, check the results, and if there are no errors, then I will click publish and export the managed solution to the test environment. This would prevent others from making edits to the main solution. Think of a managed solution as all the assets that you have created or added in a taped and wrapped box. After the testing is complete, the same solution will be deployed to the production environment. With testing templates and proper testing practices along with the AOM process, you may never have to create any unmanaged layers on top of the managed solution. However, sometimes things can slip through the cracks and you might need to add a unmanaged layer temporarily. An unmanaged layer is any edits on top of the flow or the power app that is in a managed solution. Think of unmanaged layers as additional items that are stacked on top of that wrapped box. You can tell that a flow has an unmanaged layer by clicking the Eclipse, Advanced, and Show Solution Layer. When you are creating an unmanaged layer, I will highly recommend documenting what has changed or mirror the changes right away in the development environment. Because it doesn't matter how many times you have saved and changed a flow or an app, it will always display as one unmanaged layer. And it doesn't show you what changes were made exactly, at least to my knowledge. When you're ready to redeploy the managed solution to prod, you will need to remove the unmanaged layers you have created before or after the import. Well, I hope you have a better understanding of how to manage your Power Platform assets using solutions and application lifecycle management. Thank you for watching. And there you have it. I hope this video is helpful. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and click on the bell icon to follow for more updates.